Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, this is an example for Physics C uh, from our current uh, textbook, Chapter 10. And uh, for this problem here, we're going to look at a, um, a compound system that's got a total of four objects moving, two rotating and two moving linearly. And uh, we're going to find out a bunch of information about the system. So uh, the system, I'll draw it out. Imagine you've got two pulleys. and you're hanging blocks from them. We'll call this big M, we'll call this little m. Okay, and um, we're, there's three pieces of the string. We'll call this T1, we'll call that T2, we'll call that T3, we'll call this block, or pulley A, we'll call this pulley B. Okay, and just to keep it, our, our math simple, the mass of pulley A, we'll just call that A, and the mass of pulley B, we'll just call that B. Um, each pulley has a radius. Uh, we'll assume that the radii are the same for the two pulleys. We'll see if it matters in the end. Um, first of all, when you, we're going to find the tension in each part of the rope, and then uh, the acceleration of our system. And we'll, we'll most likely, we'll find acceleration first, and then we'll use that to find those tensions. So um, I hope if you look, you can see that if this mass is indeed bigger than this one, then the acceleration of your system will be that way. So we're going to make that the positive direction, counterclockwise. Uh, and I hope you'll notice, for instance, looking at pulley A, if that pulley is to accelerate counterclockwise, T1 has to be bigger than T2. If T1 and T2 are the same number, then that pulley won't have an angular acceleration. So T1's got to be bigger than T2, and likewise, T2's got to be bigger than T3. Um, I will give you numbers for all these near the end so we can kind of look at that. Uh, but for now, we're going to find the acceleration just in terms of the givens there, okay? And fundamental constants, which in our case will be G. Um, so basically, you're going to draw an FBD for each object that's moving. And I'm just going to work my way around the system. So first we got the big mass. So I'll draw an FBD of that. For him, down is positive. That's really important. If you mess that up, the rest of the problem isn't going to work. The only two forces acting on him are big M, G, and T1. And if we write out Newton's second law for him, you know, writing net force equals MA, well, you got big M, G minus T1 equals big M A. Okay, so we got one equation. Uh, we got two unknowns, so we got T1 and we've got A. Now we'll look at pulley A. Okay, so this is pulley A. Um, the forces acting on him are T1, T2, and then there'll be a force supporting the pulley. I'll call that F A. Um, if we want, we can find that number, actually. But for now, let's not worry about that. Um, you also have the weight of the pulley, which would be AG. And again, we're calling the mass of pulley A. We're just calling it A. So uh, this is AG. Um, the only two forces causing torque about the center of the pulley are T1 and T2. Uh, FA and AG, they both act through the center of the pulley. So they have a zero lever arm. Um, they cause no torque. Uh, again, for our system, counterclockwise is positive, so that's the positive direction. So if I do net torque equals I alpha, okay, well, the torque created by T1, that's positive, it'd be T1R. The torque created by T2, that'd be negative, it'd be minus T2R equals I. Well, we're going to make the assumption that these are, are disks, solid disks. So the moment of inertia of a disk is uh, 1 half m, which in this case is a r squared times alpha. So I hope you'll notice that one of the r's drops out. So you've got t1 minus t2 equals 1 half a r alpha. So we've got a second equation, but now we've got a total of four unknowns. <laughs> we've got t1, we've got t2, we've got acceleration, and we've got alpha. Okay? If we keep going. <laughs> Now we'll do the, the pulley B. I'll do that. I'll do that over here. So there's B. Um, you've got T2 acting to the left. 
you got T3 acting down. You've got some support force here. I'll call that FB. And then you've got the weight of the pulley, which is BG. Okay. Um, counterclockwise is positive. Okay, so again, FB and BG cause no torque because they act through the center of the, the disc. They have no lever arm. Uh, T1 and T2 both cause torque. T2 is positive. So doing this again, I'll start with this line here. You've got T2 times R minus T3 times R equals I alpha. I is 1 half B R squared. And then we've got alpha. Um, again, one of the R's drops out. So you got T2 minus T3 equals 1 half B R alpha. So we got a third equation, but we've introduced a, uh, a fifth unknown. So we've got three equations, but five unknowns. T1, T2, T3, A, and alpha. Okay. Uh, let's now do a little block. I'll do that over here. I'll kind of, it's pretty easy. You got little guy. For him, up is positive. He has T3 acting on him and little mg acting on him. If I do Newton's second law on him, up being positive, you get T3 minus little mg equals little ma. So that's good news. We've got a fourth equation, but have not introduced any new unknowns. But we need a fifth equation. Okay? We've got five unknowns, but only four equations. Well, the last equation, hopefully you know this. How do we relate alpha to A? Okay. Well, the linear acceleration of the masses, or the string, is going to be alpha times r because they're attached to the edge of the disk. So our fifth equation is alpha equals a over r for each disk. So if you do that, if you put that in here and here, so if you put A over R in there, the R's drop out. And this equation becomes T1 minus T2 equals 1 half A times acceleration. And this equation, same thing, you get T2 minus T3 equals 1 half B times acceleration. The R's all drop out. And so you end up with four equations, four unknowns. So you got T1, T2, T3, and A, acceleration. Now, the cool part about solving an equation system like that, if you just write them down one over the other, you get the following. Uh, I'll start with the first one we did. We got big MG minus T1 equals big MA. The second equation, once you make that substitution, you get uh, T1 minus T2 equals 1 half the mass of pulley A times the acceleration. The third equation becomes T2 minus T3 equals 1 half B times the acceleration. And finally, the last equation you have is T3 minus little mg equals little ma. So if you look at those, uh, the easy way to solve this is to just add your equations together. So on the left side, if we add everything together, well, drop, 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 you get big MG minus little mg. And as a matter of fact, I'll factor out the G. And so you get big M minus little mg equals, all right, big M plus little m plus half of each of those masses times A. So I'll factor all that out. You get big M plus little m plus one half of pulley A's mass plus one half of pulley B's mass, okay, times acceleration. And of course, if you divide everything by that, you've got your acceleration. So your acceleration will be big M minus little m g over big M plus little m plus one half of pulley A's mass plus one half of pulley B's mass, okay. Now, we're going to throw numbers in this in a second because I do want to do something with the tension. So before we do that, a couple quick notes. It's good to solve this thing without numbers because you start to see relationships. For instance, B 
big MG minus little MG. Well, what is that? Well, that's like the net force acting on your system, the net driver of your system. What's all this? This is the system's resistance to motion. You got the two masses and then half of each pulley mass resisting the motion or the change in motion uh, of your system. Let's say instead of solid disks, what if they had been uh, hollow hoops? Well, the moment of inertia of a hoop is just mr squared. So these would no longer be a half, they'd be one. If they were a solid sphere, let's say, then they would be two thirds, um, et cetera. So, or one third, sorry. Um, so depending on what kind of shape your pulleys are, that changes what the, these fractions are, okay? Now, uh, let's throw some numbers at this. Um, and again, I want to kind of compare tensions really quick. So um, I picked some easy numbers for us to do. We can do a lot of it in our head then. Uh, let's say big M is three kilograms, little m is two, pulley A is four, and pulley B is two. And these are all kilograms, okay? Um, so let's first find our acceleration. That's an easy one. Um, A would be uh, three minus two times 9.8 over uh, three plus two plus half of A, which would be two, plus half of B, which would be one. You get uh, 9.8 over 3.8, which equals, and I did that number for us. Uh, I'm going to get an exact answer here. You get that, uh, meters per second per second. So that's the acceleration of our system, OK? Now, uh, to find the tensions, all you do is go back and plug that in where you can. So for instance, uh, for t I'll find T1 first. T1 is simply, if I move that over here, it becomes positive. If I move that over there, it becomes negative. It's big MG minus big MA. <laughs> or T1 equals uh, big M times G minus A, which is big M was 3, and we got 9.8 minus 1.225. So T1, you get 25.7 if I did my calculation right. OK. Uh, for T2, um, you could use a couple equations here. Um, I would suggest that one. So if we use this one, move T2 over there, it becomes positive. Move this stuff over there, it becomes negative. You get T2 equals T1 minus one half the mass of pulley A, which is four, times the acceleration of our system, which is 1.225. And uh, T1 being this number, so you plug that number in, you get 23.3. Uh, so T2 is indeed a little bit less than T1, like whatever, 2.4 newtons less. That T2 has to be less than T1 Again, we talked about this. T2 has got to be less than T1 because this thing's going to accelerate counterclockwise. So in order for that to happen, that guy's got to be less than that guy. And similarly, uh, we're going to find T3. Um, you can either use this or this to do it. I'll use that. So T3 is equal to Ma plus Mg. So uh, we'll use red. So T3 is equal to little m times G plus A. All right, little m was 2, and we got 9.8 plus 1.225. And you get, if you do that, 22.1. Uh, OK, which again is less than T2. So that's a real quick and easy way uh, to solve a pretty complicated system. Uh, you can find, again, we found the acceleration of the system. If you wanted to go find alpha, they'd have to give you the radius of, the, of, of each pulley. Um, and then you could find alpha if you wanted to. Uh, but we did find the acceleration of the system, and we found um, all three parts of the tension uh, that act in our system. So I hope that was helpful.